Andy, it is great to see you. Congratulations on the win today. That was a dominating performance out there. Uh, how are you approaching the tournament this year? Um, yeah, I mean, that's been rare for me recently to win a you know a quick match like that. But conditions here this year are very different uh, from pretty much... I've always struggled here during my career, but it's the core is definitely faster this year. Um, much prefer the the conditions, um, and yeah, played played a good match. And Andy, you're you're a player who's capable of doing a lot of different things on the court, and and sometimes we can't always control the results, but we can control the controllables. So for you right now, what are the what are the few things that are most important for you when you step out there? Uh, well, I think like here the the conditions, you know. Court is, is very jumpy, ball bounce is very high, and you need to try and use that to your advantage. And, um, you know, I'm a very flat hitter of the ball in comparison to a lot of guys on tour, but I do have the ability with my forehand to use the angles on the court and use, you know, a lot of, lot of height to try and push guys back. Um, and yet, sometimes it's easy and tempting to kind of want to try and finish points and flatten, you know, the ball out, but actually having a little bit more patience and using the you know, the height and letting the, the court do a little bit of work for you um, is really important, particularly here in the, the desert. So I did that pretty well today. Um, used the angles on the court and, you know, managed to get David moving. Um, and yeah, played played well. No, you've always been a <coughs> tremendous student of the game. Are there, are there elements where, you know, you are trying to still add to your game, maybe pick up from anyone else you see something uh, that they're doing that's new? Yeah, I mean, I try and... I try and watch as much tennis as I can. Um, it's not as easy for me when I'm home now. Uh, I've got four young young kids, so your priority on the TV is yeah, lower, exactly. lower down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, long way down. Um, so yeah, but I, I do I do love to watch, and you know the, the game has changed a little bit. I think in the last sort of five or six years, um, you know, with the way guys are you know hitting the ball now, you know, a lot of guys are really unloading um it wasn't like that when i when i started my career and um yeah trying to find different ways of making it difficult for them to to do that and that's where you know i have to use my game and the, my strengths um to try and make it difficult for them i don't want to be trying to hit the ball as hard as them or go toe to toe with them as much i need to use my variety use the slice and the touch and the the height to get the ball out of their comfort zone it's a lot harder to to hit a big ball when it's you know up above mm. your shoulder or below the waist so um yeah try and use that to my advantage and when you're watching who, who do you like to watch who excites you i love watching alcaraz um i just because he because because of the way that he plays the game he's just got so much variety and power and he he tries stuff you know like and he, <laughs> He doesn't always get it right. Like he makes mistakes, and that is also something that, you know, I enjoy. Yeah, enjoy watching. You never know what to, you know, what's going to come next. Um, I've always enjoyed watching Monfils um, as well. And on the women's side, um, I love watching Iga. I think she's she's brilliant, to, brilliant to watch. She's my favorite player to watch on the female side. But. Um, yeah, I, I try and watch, try and watch as much as I can. Andy, you said that, you know in the last four or five years the game has changed drastically, and it certainly has. For the first time now in the top ten, we we don't have any one-handers in the top ten. You the, had a one-hander, didn't you? Well, uh, it was a I, bad I, one-hander. It, 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 it was. Listen, one. Andy. <laughs> Listen, this is not about me. It wasn't great. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I just ran into the net behind it. But is that is that like my one-hander? Are all one-handers going the way of the the dinosaurs? What do we think? I, I don't. I, I still think there's there's a place for it. I mean, look. I mean, Sitsipas was in the top ten until a few weeks ago. I don't know if he's back yeah, in yeah. there again. But Dimitrov just outside the you know the top ten as well. Um, so there is a there is a place for it, but I just think players are serving so big now consistently. Um, I saw something the other day that from 1999 Aussie Open, the average first serve speed was 170 kilometers an hour, mm. and in Dubai, through the first two rounds, average first serve speed was 195 kilometers an hour, and the return is is 
difficult, as as you know, on the with the one-handed backhand. Um, and I, Brutal. You know, and I, and I think that, um, yeah, I think that's a big part of it, that guys are obviously serving bigger now, more consistently. And, yeah, to, to, to deal with that on the return, it's just much easier on the you know, on the on the backhand side and, you know, with players hitting bigger and bigger from the back of the court as well, it's, yeah, the timing is just is just more tricky on the single hander. So you better have a good one um, if, if you're going to have a single hander now because it's, it's, it's not easy with the way the game's been been moving. So no comeback for P. No, 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 that was it. That was it. You know, that's it. That's it. I think I got to go with the two hander from now on. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, listen, before the tournament, uh, Naomi Osaka was talking about how you, you check in on her, and especially during the tough times, now you, you watch a lot of tennis. But uh, I found that really sweet. Is that something you see yourself as, as like a mentor to some of the younger players? Um, n not, not, not necessarily. I just know that. I know when I started on the tour, like it, you're obviously unbelievably excited to 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 be playing on on the tour. But it's like the locker room is a bit of a scary place. Like you don't know like any of the any of the players really, um, and yeah, it can be a little bit intimidating at, at at times. And I remember the players that were really nice to me when I first came on the tour, and how much that you know, how much that meant to me. Um, and I also remember the ones that weren't as well. And that was, you know, that was that was tough as well when you're a young kid coming up and you've got well, idols of yours um, who you've watched on the TV and, yeah, they're being, <laughs> you know, pretty horrible to you. It's that, that's, that's not easy. So, yeah, like if any of the players are going through tricky times, like you'd always you know, obviously wish them well and hope hope they're they're doing better and... Um, yeah. We'll keep it positive. Who was nice to you? Um, who was nice to me? Jo Jonas Bjorkman. He was someone that he en ended up uh, coaching me for a little while. I always remember him being very nice to me. Tim Hemman was yeah. very nice as well. Agassi, who was my favorite player when I was growing up. I got to practice with him a few times and Brad Gilbert was coaching me at the beginning of his of my career. So went out for dinner with him a couple of times and he was, yeah, he was always really nice. So the, the vast majority of the players were really nice, let's say that, but there was a few that weren't and I remember it. We'll leave them nameless. Yeah. Uh, Andy, always great to catch up with you. It's a privilege. Great job today and uh, best of luck going forward. Thank you.